Hello everyone. Okay, let's move on to um, question 2.3. Okay, so this one has to do with government income and expenditure. So let's just read through the question and make sure we understand or try to understand the context. Okay, so it says the government receives income from various sources like tax and loans, right? This income is then distributed to the different sectors. Okay, so then it says below shows the source of of the income and expenditure for the 2019 and 2020 tax year. So now you could be thinking like, why is the tax year over two years? So the tax year in South Africa, I'm not sure what it's like in other countries, but ours runs from the 1st of March of a year to the end of February in the next year, right? And that's why it actually goes across two years, hence that sort of uh, interval, okay? Then let's just look at the government sources of income and expenditure. So Income is taxes, you see they get the most amount of tax. Um, we get loans, we get some other income, not sure what that's from, and then non-tax income, okay? Um, then we have, that could be sort of donations or something like that, and then we have expenditure, various things. You can see education, which is always great to see, and then we get, you know, a bunch of community development, economic development, basically trying to make South Africa a better country, okay, and to service its citizens. Okay, so that's expenditure. Let's now see what we can do with the questions. So it says use table three, got it. It says write the amount received from loans as a number in millions. So we see the loans are over here, right? And it's 242.7 in billion rand, okay? Now, this is a tricky one, right? So it says in billions. So we know that, let's just quickly write this over here. So you have, this is 2.3.1, right? And this is 242.7 billion, okay? So that's what it is in billions, right? We see here, it says in billions. It's important to look at that, right? In billion rands. So now we want to put it into million, right? So there are a thousand millions in one billion. That's important, right? So what we're going to do to put this into millions is we're going to say 242.7 times by a thousand. Okay. So you say 242.7 times a thousand and that gives us 242.700 million. Okay. So it says, um, Write the amount received from loans as a number in millions, okay? So we don't have to write it out as 2,400, uh, 242,700,000,000. Million. We don't have to write that out, right? Sorry, that was, I was struggling with that number. Goodness. Okay, we don't have to write it out in words. We just need to write it in millions, right? That's what they said. They said as a number in millions. So we've written it out in millions. We'd have got all our marks, okay? Let's now... Go 2.3.2. So 2.3.2 says calculating the missing value A. So I think it's always good to have a highlighter because sometimes it's difficult to find these numbers, find these sort of letters in between all these numbers. Okay. So we're trying to find out A. So A is actually the sum of all of these billions, right? All these billion numbers for tax loans and all the other things. And we have to add that all together. So we're going to say. 1370 plus 242.7 plus 180.3 plus 31.5. So it's all in billions. So you don't have to write it like that. Like you don't have to write out billion or whatever. You can just do that in the final thing. So you add all of those together, right? So we're going to say 1370 plus 242.7 plus 108.3 plus 31.5. Okay. So it's going to be 1. 824.5. So do you see here, we could actually put billion next to it, but there's no need to put billion next to it because it's already in this column where it says in billion rand. So if you put that amount there, right, that amount, the 1824.5, you would actually get what A would be. You don't even necessarily have to put the rand because it's already in this column, right, where it says in billion rand. So you don't necessarily have to put the rand. Do you see this number here? which is the expenditure, the equivalent number or the equivalent total on the expenditure side. Do you see it doesn't have a rand in front of it and it doesn't have a billion because it's in that column. Okay, so now we've done A and we're happy with that. 
And let's now move on to, well, we've calculated A, but let's now move on to the next question. So now it says, calculate the missing value B. Show all your calculations. Now, this is a slightly trickier way of going about, well, of calculating, right, than the previous question, because here we're given the total, and we're given all the other numbers that are included in the total except for B. So what we need to do is we need to take the total, take out everything that is included in the total, and what is left will be the value of B, right? So let's see. So B is going to equal this 1823.72 minus, right, or subtract all of these other things, all of these other things. So I'm going to say 278.4 plus 262.4 plus 222.6, plus 211, plus 209, sure, I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible, plus 208.5, plus 202.2, plus 112.7. Okay, let me just check I got everything. Ah, uh, yes, I think I have done it. Good, okay. Now, you might be saying, okay, Margie, but why did you plus all of those guys together when you just told me you have to subtract them? But because I put in these brackets, right? I can add all of this together because of bod mass. Do you remember bod mass, right? Bod mass tells us that we do brackets first, right? So I'm going to add everything in the brackets, and then I'm going to take it away from the full total amount over there, right? So add everything in the brackets, and then take away it from then take it away from the total amount. So let's show how we do that, right? So you basically you put all of that into your calculator, right? So let's put that into our calculator. Make sure that I can do that. Okay, 278.4. Hopefully I don't make any typos here. It's always important to make sure that you type in things carefully because it's very easy to make a mistake. I'm sure you've noticed I've made some mistakes. Um, so it's very important to make sure you type very carefully because you don't want to make a stupid calculating mistake. And it's not that you're stupid, it's just as easy. It's like a silly thing to do, right? So this is 1707, okay? So now we say 1823.72 minus 1707, okay? And then we find out that the value of B is actually one, oh, sorry, that was terrible writing I had there, 116.72, right? 116.72, okay? Because that is basically what B has to equal to in order for this whole column to add up to that amount. Okay, so that is what the value of B is. Again, you don't have to put rands in necessarily and you don't have to put billions because it's in this column, right? It really says billion rand. So we would know what it is once we put it in. Okay, so let's just do the last question for this question. And then we would have been done with an extra 42 marks. Sure, we like done with half the paper here. Okay. So it says, determine the amount allocated for community development as a percentage of the total expenditure. Okay, let's find community development. It says over here, there's community development, and the amount is 208.5. But what does it say? It says as a percentage of total expenditure. So we're also going to look at the total expenditure. So we're going to say 208.5, right, because that's my community development, over my total expenditure, and then if I want to make it a percentage, remember, we always have to times by 100, right? This is very important because that's how we make it a percentage. So I'm saying the cost associated with community development divided by the total expenditure, right? So that's what I've done there. We plug that into our calculator and let's see how much of our expenditure, right, is actually related to, um, let me just do this nicely, okay, over 1823.72, let me just check I type that in correctly, times by 100, all right? Important to type that in correctly, okay? And then we're going to say 11.43%. Remember, we want it to be two decimal places, right? You can put in all of them, right? You can put in all of them because in this case, a percentage is not like a currency in the sense that you can only put two um, decimal places, but if you just put that in, that's also fine, right? And then that is our final answer there. We would have got, let's see how many marks this was for, seven, we would have got 11 marks, and it's not too difficult, it's not too much of a difficult question, we just need to make sure that we are thinking very clearly. Okay, perfect, so now we are moving on to question three.